Who's this? This is Fudge. Fudge. Yeah. Chihuahua across Jack Russell, is that yeah. right? So it's a bit spicy. Yeah, it's good at home. Yeah, and then out and, and about? Out and about is not so good. With what? Uh, it's usually reactive with other dogs. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't like to do is his toe when he's out. <laughs> what he does like... he do instead? <laughs> so he ignores me basically. Oh, okay. And he does that noise? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. When he sees other doggies? Yeah. And when he eventually gets to another dog? He won't play with he won't play with him now either. He'll play at home with his toys. Toys, yeah. He won't play out. Has he managed to meet any other dogs or just... he just meet dogs. Yeah. But he don't he don't play nice. Okay, what does so he do? He just gets aggressive, he okay. gets very nasty. Okay. So I, just to bite don't, him. I don't all his ackles come up and everything, so Bless him. I don't stay in I don't I, I don't think that's fair on everybody else. No, of course not. Oh, so, I'll try and get him to meet my dogs and then it's cute. And how old did you say he was? He's 10. He's 10? Yeah. Oh, can we teach an old dog new tricks, huh? Yeah. I'd like him not to worry about other dogs. Okay. I don't necessarily want him to go play with other dogs. Just worry less about them. We'll sit, worry less about okay. them. Because once we're out and we're walking, mm -hmm. if he sees another dog, yeah. he's not interested, then he's, he's, he's already, yeah, he's okay. already worried about. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, Come on, big fudge. Ten-year-old fudge. A bloody chihuahua, so he fucking loves kicking off at doggies. Come on, should we go sit down, fudge? Come on, then. First things first, make friends with fudge. Come on, Fudge, we're gonna go make friends. <laughs> Smells like Marmite. Oh. Right, we're gonna leave that there. Once he eats it, we'll do some training. But until then, we're gonna chill out, Fudge. Good boy. You can get strapped to my desk. Good boy. Sorry, mate. Calm, calm down. Oh, 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 good boy. There you go. And from me? Aha. Spat it out. Fudge. Fudge. Oh. So we'll leave him a little bit longer. Once he takes food from me, it's a sign we can get started. I'm going to wait for him to quote unquote decompress before we uh, ask anything of him. Aim of the game with Fudge is to probably start with a bit of recall. When dogs are defensive in their reactions and small as well, sometimes go into uh, exercise which we allow them a little bit more freedom can help things. And then we can use the recall itself as a positive interrupter for unwanted behavior with a small consequence for non-compliance, but I'll explain that when I get him out. But probably going to start recall today once he has a conceptual understanding of that, then throw that around other dogs. And by recall, I don't mean let him off a lead and hopefully he comes back when he sees another dog. I mean, put him on a six foot, maybe even a five yard lead and um, get him uh, engaging with the handler and the presence of other dogs, hopefully by the back end of today. Then start teaching a, or proofing a place command. I believe his mum's already started place work, so that's great. Give her some pre-training homework. But yeah, we'll see. Where it is. Oh boy. But we got to get Fudge comfortable first. You can tell he's a little bit of a nervy dog with how he was in the car and shaking and things, but he's got good food drives and that's good. We start asking loads of him now and start trying to boss him around. Chances are he's going to just shut off to us and we won't get anything productive done, so. Fudge, Fudge. Yeah, boy. Oh, you're clever. So I really like Chihuahuas. I think they're fucking class dogs. I think they're really cool little dogs. They're very barky, but a very good little boy. Fudgy. Lad. Cool. Gonna grab my laptop, gonna sit down, answer a couple of emails, answer any questions that are maybe asked in our online academy, which I answer every Monday. 
And as always, you can download our 100% free dog reactivity guide by clicking that link in the bio. It's going to teach you everything you need to know about tackling your dog's reactivity, whether that be towards dogs, humans, cats, bikes, squirrels, etc., etc. It's going to give you the conceptual understanding of the avenues you need to take when it comes to fixing your dog's reactivity. Fudge. Oh, good boy. Fudge is 10 years old, right? So. I'm not gonna fucking put a hell of a lot of pressure on Fudge to get things right today. I'm essentially gonna treat him like a puppy. Got a flexi lead, we're gonna do some like very informal flexi recalls. And then I'm gonna throw that activity in the context of other dogs to try and familiarize him with other dogs. I'll bring out my dogs uh, to begin with. Then start showing him that, listen, the whole dog's around. They're not gonna charge up to you. They're not gonna hurt you. They're not out to get you. Then we'll put a bit more control on him later on. But you know, he's paid his dues, he's 10 years old. So. Can you teach an old dog new tricks? Of course you can. Can we change dog's behavior in older dogs? Yeah, of course we can. But I'm gonna just, you know, bear in mind, he's, yes, good boy, Fudgy, good boy. I'm gonna bear in mind, he's 10 years old, so I'm not gonna ask or expect too much of him. Fudge. Yes, good lad. Yeah. So I'm essentially just gonna do a uh, recall, like puppy recalls that I've done with loads of puppies before. My puppy has a socialization activity. Fudge. Yes, good lad. Sometimes with smaller dogs, they're a little bit more defensive with confinement, e.g. on a short lead. We take the short lead out of the picture for a little bit, do a little bit of work on a longer lead or flexi lead, start orientating the dogs towards us, like being towards us is good, then put a cue on it. Then once we've done that, we can use that cue as like a positive interrupter. Fudge. Good lad, yes. I'm just using his name to begin with. As you can see, he's a little bit shy of me. Good boy. Doesn't have to be too complicated. I say his name, I move away from him. He catches me, he gets some food, he doesn't. I use the lead to bring him in, Fudge. Here you go, look. Yes. And you can see he's just like getting to that point where he gets to me and then is scanning. And I'll combat that by continually trying to move away from him. So I'll show you now. Fudge. Good boy. Yes. Good lad. Trying to mitigate that, but there he goes. Good boy, and just teach him, hey, good things are there. What I'm gonna do is just start marking and paying him on the floor. Again, we've got that bit of detachment where he's, you know, he's not ready to be my best friend yet. Fudge, a little bit of lead look as he comes in. If he goes over there, he can move again. Like a lazy... Yes. So, cause he's a small dog and the flexi's a big flexi, He's feeling the retraction and it's, he's opposing it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, same activity, but I'm gonna get a really thin baby long line instead. Whereas a stronger, heavier dog wouldn't feel so much retraction and pushback. So dogs have a strong opposition reflex. So as of here, fudge, as he's coming in, look, he's coming in and he's just like fighting against that lead and pulling away at the last second. So we're gonna try and change that a little bit with a different piece of equipment. Okay, let's, we've changed the line. We've got a long line. We're trying to change that picture a little bit. Good boy. Fudge. Good lad, yes. There, 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 there. Perfect. Okay, getting somewhere. That slip collar's getting his feet tangled. Fudge. Tap, tap. Good lad. Good lad. Oh, he's getting chased, yes. Good lad. Good boy. Yeah, good lad. Yes. If you've got sometimes like a nervy dog or rescue dog or something, like marking and just paying on the floor is fine. And for people that say, but it's going to teach a dog to eat off the floor. You can combat that with obedience later on. You can get your dog really easy to not eat off the floor. Good boy, Fudge. Again, lots of room for Fudge. We've seen similar activities before on a shorter bubble. You know, he's a 10 year old Chihuahua cross. I'm not going to get a Fucking great obedience on him early doors. Ranger's out though, so we'll use him. Ranger, come! Fudge. Good lad, yes! Good lad. I like the lazy ocean hugs the shore. Fudge. Yes. Good lad. Good boy. Down. All the way. He's like, hey dad, you got pate? I want some of that good shit. Come on. So I'm gonna let Fudge see Ranger, look at Ranger. And before he has a chance to get things wrong, fudge. Yes. Good boy. I'm paying on the floor. So what we're seeing now is 
corrections, negative reinforcement, punishment, all words that scare people. But if we see it happen live in, in action, is there anything to be scared about? Does the dog look shut down? Is he kicking off? Does he look super stressed? No. If anything, he's stressed more by the wind than the pressure I'm applying to him. So, fudge. Yes, good boy. Good lad, whoa, good boy. Rain just got up, broke us down. But that's okay, it can make it a bit harder for fudge. Good boy. You okay, bud? Fudge. Yes, good lad. Good boy. Look like at fudge go. I like the lazy ocean hugs the shore. Hold me close, weigh me more. And again, we always start with a dog like Ranger or Darla. There's Darla, look. Hi, Darla. Fudge. Yes. Good, I'm just paying behind me, bringing the dog away. He can put his nose down. That's all good. Again, all I've done is some name acquisition with Fudge and a little bit of negative reinforcement if he doesn't respond, like super, super basic stuff. My job isn't as a professional dog trainer to show you how to get your dog into a focus heel or, you know, fast downs and things like that that I can do with Stark, my sport dog, but regular pet dog, he's pooing. Oh, Fudge is pooing. We need an interval. Fudge, yes, good lad. So back to it, tap, tap, good boy, yeah. I could bring all my dogs out, four of them, and then correct the fuck out of Fudge. Shut him down, he's not gonna bark, he's not gonna do anything. He's gonna flatten him out. That does not stop Fudge barking next time he's in that situation. What that's gonna do is just suppress him in that moment and potentially bottleneck the reaction for next time he's in the context of other dogs. So food for me and reward for me is really, really important. Can't carry us the whole way, we know that. Good boy. Down. Good boy. And I wanna see if I can get Fudge to have a sniff of Ranger's back end. You love pate, don't you? Right, okay. Okay, he doesn't give a shit about Ranger, that's good. He's taking food, that's good. He's responding to his name, that's good. He's not over threshold just because I needed to use a correction. Darla! Darla's out roaming around like a street dog. Where is she? Darla! Darla, come! Uh, lazy ocean, how the shore? Hold me close, I need me more. Fudge! Oh, whoa, he doesn't like Darley. Yes. Come on, Darls! New dog. And what we're working on now is increasing Fudge's friendship group. Fudge! Yes, good lad. You're clever, clever. And I'm gonna let him watch the dog. I'm not gonna expect him to like the dog to arrive and him to immediately turn his back on the other dog. Just very simple, good boy. Let him watch, let him take it in. Let him smell her from a distance because he can smell her now. Fudge. Good boy. Yes. And we have a little past the point of no return with a reactive dog where we're not gonna get their attention because they're going like too far through the reactivity sequence, which has a different definition depending on who you ask. Fudge. Good boy, he's clever. Yes. So just gradually exposing him to other dogs. Notice I've not tried to distract him or just like completely divert his attention. I want him to process the presence of these dogs. Good boy. I've not had to use like a correction per se. I've used some guidance through pressure. Like I've used pressure for sure, low level pressure to kind of get him back to me when he's not responded to his name, but I've not had to like punish a behavior. If it, he does kick off a Dala and go at her or whatever, of course I'm gonna come in with a lead and say, hey, you can't do that. But my job is to have as, as a dog trainer, set the dog up to have as little of those <laughs> events as possible. Like the lazy ocean hugs, it's sure. Good boy. And we're just teaching Fudge that when you see other doggies, yes, when you feel certain ways, there's other options you can go down. You can just like come away, come back to me and get your head on the floor. Like, that's okay. I've not asked Fudge to sit. I've not asked Fudge to down or to heal. Like that can come later on. I'm just, it's basically a baby recall. Not even a formal one. But like how beneficial can that be when you give a dog a really set, black and white set of rules I say your name, you come back to me, you get food. If you don't, I use the lead, and then you get food. Like, super, super simple. 
Yes. And I'll have someone ask the question, why are you paying the dog after you've had to correct the dog to come back to you? Reason being, the dog, in that moment he's not coming back to you, has established that there's something more valuable to them in the environment, even if there's a, the value of barking at the other dog, which has a value because it serves a purpose. If that is more valuable than what I have to offer the dog, or he deems it so, and then I compel him to come back and he arrives back at me and I do not pay him, I validate the fact that he presumed that the other option was more valuable. Hopefully that makes sense. I also had a comment on Instagram the other day saying that um, I don't understand what a condition Q is and you know the person doesn't respond to their name because of it, there's value associated to it. Um, it's just a reflexive response. That's fine, but sometimes you're put in situations where you're not gonna respond to your name because you perceive that potentially something is dangerous around, or someone walks in with a bucket full of Ben and Jerry's now, and then Chloe's over here fucking saying my name a thousand times. I'm gonna look at the Ben and Jerry's, and I'm thinking, where's that going? Because I want that, right? So, of course there's value, and there's also value in negative behaviors which some people don't understand. If he has used barking and growling, to keep himself safe from other dogs or perceived to be safe from other dogs, that has a value because it served the purpose of safety. So that behavior is associated with the value of how safe it kept him. So of course, the strong behaviors that are created and born through negative reinforcement also have a value. We're not just talking toys and foods and good things have value. Also, our dog's unwanted behavior can sometimes have value too. I'm gonna Bin this session off in a second, just because it's gone really good. We're gonna sit down, have our lunch together, and then I'll bring him out this afternoon, and maybe I'll get Stark out and the Malinois out, depending on how he does. How, how hard we make things for our dog is based upon how successful our last session was. Not where we think they should be, or not where we want to be. How successful was the last session? This was very successful. Therefore, we can make it harder next time we bring Fudge out. Fudge. Good boy. Good lad. Good lad. Yes. Good boy.